Hello, Maid Van Nordrick. You're joining Hello. us from the World Aquaforestry Centre? Yes, correct. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, could you tell me why you're here, first of all? Well, um, the World Agroforestry Centre is, is a research organisation that tries to make sure we, the understanding of trees and the way trees matter for farmers is brought to the forum of the climate change negotiators. And okay. we come here both with positive messages as well as concerns about the way the current rules are emerging. Okay, so what do you think are the risks of red at the moment? Well, I think for us the main challenge with red is that it, it supposes that forest is different from non-forest or that the world consists of forest versus agriculture. And we, we know there is a lot of land in between. There's a lot of trees on farm, there's a lot of land that farmers would not want to call forest, but actually it contains as much carbon as the natural forest. So we think the line is drawn on the wrong way if we talk about forest versus non-forest, and we should look at the whole landscape. That is our simple message. So what are the implications behind not being able to properly identify? Well, I think on two ways. On, on one hand, if, if we think red is about reducing emissions, then we must realize that if we protect all the forest, we may not reduce emissions. The emissions that currently happen inside the forest may easily switch outside the forest. And we have numbers we can show that that is, can last for at least six or seven years. So we will not- explain why that is? Well, because a lot of the land with trees that is not considered forest has a high density of trees. Um, and if the demand for pulp and paper mills cannot be satisfied within the forest, it will switch to the farmland and to the others. So we will actually see that emissions may not be any less, but they switch to, to the land outside the institutional forest. But OK, the world wants a reduction of emissions. And to do that, we need to look at the whole landscape. We cannot do it from a small part of it, only ignoring the rest. So on one hand, we say, yes, uh, you may not achieve the goals that you want by only looking at the forest. You have to look at the whole landscape to see whether you're achieving that. On the other hand, a lot of the potential beneficiaries of RED are exactly those small farmers and also that, that are not included in most of the current thinking about how RED will be implemented. So. We're convinced that, well, we're okay if red is seen as a very for small first step towards a whole landscape approach. But if people will be complacent, they say, we have the rules about red, now we expect our goals to be met. No, uh, it has to be moved very quickly to efforts that, that look at the whole landscape, include the whole landscape and all the trees that matter and all the people that manage trees. So how would you have a, have a system which actually looked at the whole landscape? Well, um, in terms of the, the accounting and the remote sensing, we can see the trees. We don't need to know the forest. Yeah? So in, in that sense, in terms of the, the technical side, it is, it is actually easier to do a whole, the whole landscape than to do a subset of it. In terms of the mechanisms, yeah, we think that RED is not about protecting the forest. Uh, RED is about alternative development pathways providing income for people, providing securities for people that would, as a consequence, keep more for forest and carbon in it. So it's not about uh, sharing out one dollar each for ha or a half dollar for every tree. It is about using that money to invest in different trajectories. Yeah? And those, okay, we need to recognize the reality of the landscape. So one of the very positive things we've seen, for example, in the country of Indonesia, where I live and do most of my work, is new ways of resolving conflict between forest authorities and local communities about, you can call it joint management, which allow co-investment. It is, the farmers will say this is a rubber forest, a rubber agroforest, it is our forest. The forest authorities can now say, okay, it's actually being protected. It provides the watershed functions that we want. Things like that are possible if we explicitly focus on the interface between the farmers and the forest and look at the landscape. So we have positive examples of how that has worked, but unfortunately only at very small scale yet. And we, we do think that message needs to, to be picked up and, and be expanded much more widely. 
The thing is that red is one of the big hopes for these negotiations. I mean, people's expectations yes. are tremendously mm -hmm. low, but red is one of the is one of the things people think can can work. And although extraction from the mitigation targets is yeah. another mm -hmm. issue, but you're suggesting that red in itself isn't going to work. So well, where does that leave us? Yeah, and 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 we don't want to we don't want to rock the boat. At the same time, if you ask anybody, OK, we have read, and what does it mean? What is the definition of forest that we use? Yeah, Is it about a natural forest? Is it about a plantation forestry? Is an oil palm plantation a forest, yes or no? Ask everybody who agrees on red, and you get widely different answers. So yes, we've, we've agreed on something. But if you ask what exactly have we agreed on, it is still rather fuzzy so if we see this as a positive expression of interest fine but in reality we will have to to look at the whole landscape and all the trees and all there if we want to be effective that is our from the analysis we've done in 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 five different countries so indonesia vietnam nepal cameroon peru in all those countries we see that the way the term forest is understood differs a lot between different parties different stakeholders different agencies um, and, and a mechanism that, that assumes we all agree on that is, is, is not going to work. Um, we, we will need to look at the broader, broader landscape before we capture all the interest and make it happen. Do you think it's possible to extract a red agreement from the mitigation targets agreement? Sorry? The, the Do you think it's possible yeah. to extract a red agreement from the mitigation targets agreement? I, we think that actually, in, in, and again, if you look at a country like Indonesia, that, that is a front runner on the NAMA, on the, the Nationally Appropriate Mitigation Action, that that's probably the more progressive approach right now. And within that, of course, Indonesia is, is the front runner in terms of emissions from forest and land, land use sector, at the same time, is a front runner in terms of NAMA um, expression of, of yeah, uh, commitment of the country itself to do something about it. If we explicitly read as part of that broader approach, fine. And, and currently, uh, Indonesia is taking it in that direction and taking it as yeah, the overall economy and the rural economy and becomes less important what exactly is read because the other parts will also have to contribute to the NAMA debate. So we do think where red is embedded in NAMA, it's okay, it will move in the right direction. Yeah, but without... A yeah, without commitments and without accountability at the national border, it will be difficult to, to achieve emission reduction. Okay. And in terms of, if we take it back to the different types of trees, yes. at what mm -hmm. point will it be, a, we be able to get more of a clear definition about what trees are being incorporated? Yes, I, I, I think we see so far, I mean, there's a group, of course, who cares about the biodiversity and the natural forest and they have one concept of forest and then you'll see very high rates of, of forest conversion of deforestation and there's a group that cares more about forest as a productive environment and the plantation forestry is considered forest and you'll see for a country like Indonesia actually pretty low and um, low rates of deforestation so if you look at that deforestation as a number well we, we have results uh, any number that you want between zero and five and a half percent I can tell you what by what definition you can get that number uh, but so the, these concepts they're widely different concepts there is not a single concept of forest there are ten different types of forest and each have their own dynamic and, and if we want to to manage that we need to not just have a map that is black or white forest and non-forest we need the multiple types and within that then we'll quickly see the agroforest as an important category and, and we grade into trees that are mostly useful for the farmers on, on farm and and then we get i think much closer to a reality that matters for people at the same time that's much closer where we manage the biodiversity and manage the, the social benefits so again we see a red agreement and we hope it will come this this week as an, as an important first step, but let's not think that we have achieved anything. It's only the very f first step, and we'll see quickly that the many different interpretations of forest um, and the wider landscape within that takes place will be essential for making real, the real progress that we all want and hope for. Okay, thank you very much, Main. Okay, welcome.